All right, guys, so I'm going to be setting up the timing, uh, the RPMs, and uh, then I got reading a little bit about it and spark plugs. So come to find out, uh, GM, the 4.3 liter Vortec engine, the spark plug should be gapped at 0 .060. So uh, I just pulled out one of the spark plugs and the spark plug is actually at 0 .040. So uh, give me a second and I'll spin the camera around and I'll show you. So there you go. So that's where this one's gapped. So let's see, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is number six. So um, uh, I'm gonna set all these at 0 0.060 according to this gap tool. I'm not saying this is 100% uh, accurate. It's not like the dealer ones, but this is the one I got. So this is the one I'm going to go with. So I'm going to start pulling out spark plugs, setting the gap uh, at the correct gap that, uh, that this motor requires. So uh, hold on a bit and we'll be right back. All right, so uh, that's where I'm going to set them all, right there. So let me get, get going. All right, so the gaps on, so uh, let's see, one, two, four, six was 31, 36, 41. So now those are all gapped at uh, 0 0.060. So now on to one, three, and five. So I'm going to set the timing light on it because the timing light says you're not supposed to set it on while it's running. So let me put that on and put the lead on uh, plug number one. Um, I cannot see the timing marks from up above. So I actually have to go underneath with the timing light, shine it up in there, see where I'm sitting, uh, then come out. If I have to spin the, the distributor, I will. And then I have to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until it's right. So yeah, let me get the timing light, set it on there, and then go up and look. So I lifted up the truck so I can climb underneath there. Uh, you're not going to see too much, but uh, once I get uh, it warmed up and the base or the timing that it's sitting at, I'll try to grab the camera and take it down there and show you where it's sitting. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of doing this after work a little bit. Uh, this weekend I have to uh, change out the sub subframe bushings on my wife's daily driver. So that's going to definitely take up the lift and probably the whole weekend because it's, you know, subframe bushings. So it's pretty much a 2010 Nissan Rogue. So you have to drop the whole cradle down. And yeah. So anyway, so 14 millimeter for the distributor bolt. If I have to loosen it up, which I'm sure I will. And uh, we'll see where it idles, how it runs, just by gapping the, the spark plugs. To 0 0.060. I thought that was quite hefty of a gap. That's what GM says these motors need, so that's what I did. Of course, you would have thought I would have done all that before. Oh well. I didn't blow anything up, right? All right. Pretty straightforward, positive, negative on the battery. direction for the plug and this is the timing light I'm using. So yeah. Alright, so it's reading zero across the boards. 
I can adjust this uh, so the timing mark reads zero when I adjust this up or down. Uh, it'll make more sense as I go along. Up. See how she does on a cold start with the new spark plug gaps. say right at 600 at a hot idle. So I'm going to let this get up to temperature. Uh, let the fan turn on. Yeah. I got a couple of that's a lot rattling that I got going on. Uh, but yeah, so let's get this up to temperature and then we'll see where she's at down below. This is warming up. A little side note. Um, everything that I'm reading on the forums and stuff, they say that 600 uh, for the RPM range, it uh, kind of runs a little rough. So, so far it sounds like that's what it's doing. Um, the computer, since this is carbureted, with the computer, if it had the ECM or ECU with the uh, throttle body injection system still on it, uh, the hot idle is set for 575, 600? Yeah. So, um, right now she's cold starting. Plugs are gapped to 60, and I gotta check the timing on it. So, yeah, so let's just, let's just warm up, and then we'll see where we're at in a minute. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, we aren't up to temperature yet, but it has been sitting here warming up uh, for what, maybe five minutes, and already the RPMs have gone up. But she's smooth, so. Uh, once it gets the temperature, I'm gonna turn it down to, uh, I guess, 600 as they say, uh, and then uh, check the timing. I just wanted to show you that as it's getting warm, the RPM is changing. I don't know. Honestly, this kind of mechanical stuff, um, I do paint the body. So this stuff I'm just figuring it out as I go uh, and hope I don't blow anything up. Um, fans just kicked on, so I am at the top. So anyway, so basically what I'm saying is I even had to go out and buy a time and, like, and spark plug gap because I didn't have it. Right. So we're at uh, 7. Yeah. So that's where we're at now. So I'm going to go down and check the timing and uh, I will be right back. See it right there. That's where I'm at. 28 degrees advanced. So I gotta back that down quite a bit. Where I wanna see it. Is right there. 8 degrees. Way off. Woo, my fan's blowing. 
Okay guys, I uh, loosened up the distributor, I turned it. I am now at eight degrees advance. Uh, one other guy that I spoke to has a carbureted system and he too is running at eight degrees and he says it, it's perfect runner. Um, so I've heard six, eight, 10, 12. So right now, so let me go down there and show you now that it's at eight. There was a minute ago. Huh? So let me go check out. Okay guys, sorry about all this noise, but this is how I got to get underneath here. So, so it's 8 degrees. So there it is. So I'm 8 degrees. All right, so it's at eight degrees, right where I want it. Spark plug go gap to 60. Let me tighten down the distributor. I'll check it one more time after I tighten it. And then we should be good for the timing. So, yeah. Timing is set. RPMs. I like I like where that sounds. So let's try the throttle response. Yep. I'll go with that. Probably this weekend I'm going to give it another test driver on the block and then uh, once I'm done with that I'm going to pull it in I'm going to turn it off and uh, see if it diesels um, it didn't diesel just now when I turned it off it just right off so I'm hoping I got that that part of the engine's life uh, fixed um, but yeah so 28 degrees advanced timing now it's at 8 degrees advanced timing um, spark plugs were gapped all over the place anywhere from 0 0.030 to the highest was uh, 0 0.04344 somewhere on there so now they're all at 0 0.060 um, yep. so I have to clean up a little bit uh, my wife is flying back in from New York City she had went up there and visited her parents slash her dad's birthday so um, yeah, so I'm going to do that, clean up, uh, have my kids get the house squared away because you know what happens when, uh, when mom's around, not around for about a week. So yeah, so we're just going to clean up a little bit and then uh, we may get back after this. Um, I may throw the front bumper on this weekend if I have time <clears throat> from the sub subframe bushings I got to do. And when I mean throw it on, it's like right now it's just black. I just took care of the rust. I Sam's rust proofed it and I'm just going to pop it on there to see how it looks sitting out there like side view. Um, if, I don't know if it's going to stick out too much. I love the Cadillac bumper, but overall if it doesn't flow with the truck, I just get a regular uh, 47 to 54 regular 3100 truck bumper. It's a little smaller, but it reaches around. So it should look good. Before I spend the money on that and mock it up. I'm going to put the bumper on real quick and see how it looks out there. You know, when it drives around. Looks cool? I'll leave it. Doesn't? I'll take it off. No big deal. All right. I'll catch you in a little bit. Thanks. So here we are. We are about to drop the subframe on my wife's daily driver. Let's see if we can get this done today so tomorrow, Sunday, we can uh, get back on uh, the other project. So we'll get back to you. About an hour, got the subframe out. Yep, that's not supposed to be that way. All righty, let me get these knocked out and then new ones knocked back in. We're gonna talk about those uh, spark plugs gapped at 0.060. Um, so 
So I was doing my wife suffering bushings on her road yesterday, so I had to jockey this off the lift, put the road on the lift, because uh, you have to drop the whole engine cradle or whatever. And um, so when I got done with that, um, when I went to pull it in, and when I went to pull it off, this thing ran really bad. Like, it was spitting and sputtering and all sorts of crazy stuff. So uh, I decided to... I put in new spark plugs today, this morning. I'm not going to show the process because I've already showed the process of me gapping them at uh, point uh, S60. So these these spark plugs are OEM AC Delco uh, spark plugs, and they're gapped at uh, 0.035. So we'll put those, or I put those back in. I have not fired it up since. Uh, all I did was just put the new spark plugs in. I took out the NGK V powers. Supposedly they're supposed to be a better plug or whatever, um, but I just went back to stock uh, AC Delco stuff. So I'm going to fire it up now, cold start with the new plugs in it and gapped at uh, 3.5. And we'll see how she runs because yesterday, oh man, it was a fight. So I got to jockey this thing a little better for the lift to get up underneath because I want to uh, try to put that front bumper on and a couple other things today. I kind of lost a day yesterday doing my wife's road, but that's okay because it's a safety, safety issue and we really had to take care of that. So here we go, I'm going to fire it up and see how she does at 3.5 uh, gap. Way better than it was yesterday. Yesterday was a fight. Uh, it's sitting there and it's idling pretty good. Yesterday it was, I had to go in there and, you know, do the whole butterfly feather of the gas, keep it running, keep it running. So, yeah, I like that. You know, I'm going to jockey this thing a little bit better on the lift and uh, we'll be right back. All right, guys, for the vibration on those side panels right here. Um, so it's metal against metal, so obviously it's going to vibrate. Uh, what we used to do back in the day, uh, when we had like massive stereo equipment in our trunks or whatever, the license plates always rattled. So to combat that, we would get like a super sticky felt. So that's what I did. I got a roll of felt, um, and the backside is super sticky, and I cut them an inch, inch and a half wide. And then I place it all along the perimeter of the, those panels. And then when I tighten it down, you tap it, no more noise. So these, these, this actually works great for a lot of things, not just for vibrations and stuff, but like if you have a center console and uh, you know how they have that felt inside, if you make a center console, you can actually cut a piece of this and lay it down in there so it's nice. Um, that's what I did on my 3100 build. Uh, I laid that in there. And you can get a roll of this. I got this off Amazon. It's relatively inexpensive for what it is and what it does. So yeah, so I'm gonna cut more strips. I'm gonna apply it to this other side. And uh, yeah, here we go.
no more rattle. So uh, this is the stuff. This is self adhesive felt shelf liner. Amazon. That's the part number. Yep. So that's how it is. It comes in a big roll. Cut it down. And there you go. Takes care of all your rattles. So there's the front bumper. As you can see, I welded in pieces so it would run the entire body line of the grill and then wrap around. It sticks out there pretty good. It's attached is I made brackets off the old Cadillac mounts and then there's that flat piece that the grill sits on and that flat piece that goes all the way from there to there that the grill mounts to is welded to the frame the two two horns that come out on both sides there's a plate that runs across there that's welded and then that flat plate that is also welded on the sides all across the back and on that side, and then this bumper is bolted to that. Oh, puppy decided to come out. Hey, Tara. All right. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this weekend. Basically, today is just a few things that I did, whatever. Uh, next weekend, uh, we won't be in town, so we actually have to go to a trip to take care of a few things. Uh, so next weekend is going to be an off weekend for me, but uh, yeah, the weekend after that, hopefully we can do a little bit more tweaking with uh, that front bumper, meaning like paint it up, uh, get it all smoothed out. I do like the how it looks, so I'm going to stick with it, you know, plus I already have it. I already got a lot of time into it, and you know, Cadillac bumpers are cool, right? So anyway, hit like, share, subscribe, uh, all that other fun stuff they tell you, and remember to go out there and build something cool. Catch you on the next one. Bye.